Hi everybody, we're back. This is the Cube Silicon Angle's continuous production of Mongo DB Days. We're here live in New York City. I'm Dave Vellante, and I'm with my co-host Jeff Kelly. Julian Simon is here. He's the Vice President of Engineering at Criteo, uh, and we're going to talk about how they're using Mongo DB, how they're adding value. Um, welcome to the Cube. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, pleasure. our pleasure. Good, good to see you. Um, so tell us a little bit about Criteo, uh, what you guys are, are are doing, and what you're all about. So Criteo is, um, is a French company. Uh, it was started in 2005, and uh, we work in uh, the uh, online uh, advertising space. Um, and uh, we're a global leader in what we call performance display. Uh, so in a nutshell, what we do is, uh, for our customers, who are uh, the main e-commerce websites and retailers and, and brands, we build and serve on the internet uh, advertising banners personalized in real time for every single display. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, how you do that and, and what you do, obviously using Mongo as you know, part of that infrastructure. So, we'll talk about that. How do you use Mongo? Well, we use uh, MongoDB to store uh, what we call the product catalogs. Uh, and uh, as you would expect, those are the product catalogs of our customers. And um, this is really the starting point of our, of our platform because at, you know, at the end of the, of the day, we need to show product uh, images and product information in the banners. So we need to uh, ingest in our platform this product information. So we have product feeds coming from our, our customers, so over 3,000 uh, major uh, e-commerce companies worldwide. We work in 30, over 30 markets, so we ingest this information into our platform, uh, and uh, we use MongoDB to do that. And then it will be fed to, uh, to our uh, web servers, and it will end up in our banners. Okay, so how does the system figure out what banners to serve, and, <laughs> and, and you know, how frequently does it update and refresh that, that model? Uh, so we, um, we have our own algorithms. Uh, we have uh, what we call prediction algorithms, who are uh, used to decide whether we should buy some advertising space in real time for a given user. Uh, so the decision is really, uh, is the price of that space uh, compatible with the chance of generating a click? Because that's what we want to build, right? Clicks. Uh, and so we have those algorithms, and if we decide to buy that space, then we need to recommend products. So what are the products that we want to show at this given time to this given user for the best chance of success. So really our technology relies on algorithms and data. And uh, part of that data is uh, product data that we store in MongoDB. Okay, so, the, uh, so, so you get paid for the software to, to be able to do that. Right. Your, your customers get paid for the clicks. Right. And your customers' customers get paid for conversion. Yep. Right. So at the end of the day, the better you are at your job, the more conversion that occurs and the more value gets created. Exactly, uh, and uh, that's why we're calling that performance uh, advertising because to be very clear, we only get paid, Criteo only makes money if we deliver clicks. Uh, if we s buy advertising space to display banners that don't generate any clicks, then our customers, so advertisers, don't pay us. So, you know, I keep saying we need to be very smart or we'll be very dead very quickly. Yeah, so you're arbitraging that, uh, <laughs> that, 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 that opportunity Absolutely. in a way that, that allows you to be profitable. So, um, so as, a, as the VP of engineering, uh, your role is to work in the product, the architecture, all of the above? Well, I'm, uh, I'm the plumber. <laughs> okay. So um, my, my guys and, and myself, uh, we're uh, trying to build a highly scalable platform uh, that can uh, serve uh, over one billion ads every day in over 30 countries. And uh, it keeps growing, you know, we're still a fairly uh, young company and the growth has been uh, spectacular and, uh, and it's, a, it's a constant challenge to scale both the infrastructure and the applications to, uh, you know, to keep up with the business. So it sounds like there's two real critical parts here. I mean, it's, certainly there's scale, but it's, it's, it's the analysis to determine what to display. And then, of course, 
the actual content that you're going to, the data associated with what you're going to display, which you're, you're storing in Mongo. So, um, so I was told you, you've had a growth rate of more than 200% in five years. Now, I don't know if that's accurate. That's a big yeah, number. Yeah, it's <laughs> it sounds crazy, but uh, yes, the company is that, is that storage uh, experience. Wise? Uh, no, no, this this is uh, revenue. Oh wow, that's even so better. Two hundred thousand percent, and you know, I, it's <laughs> difficult for me to even. <laughs> comprehend that number, but yeah, as I've said, the the, the growth of the company has been has been mm -hmm. spectacular. We have now over uh, 700 uh, employees. We have offices in 15 countries: uh, Europe, the U.S., uh, South America, uh, J Japan, Korea, Australia, etc. So we're we're uh, you know we're we have a global presence, and so to 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 handle that. We need to have global infrastructure, and mm -hmm. you know that's a, a large part of my job. Again, making sure we have uh, proper resources in Europe, in the Americas, and in APAC <coughs> to keep growing and keep scaling our technical capabilities and eventually the, the business. Right. So, are you running uh, in the cloud, or are you running? Uh, so no, uh, we're uh, we're like uh, bare metal. Okay. And uh, so we have uh, today we have seven data centers. Uh, three in Europe, two in uh, the US, and two in, uh, in Japan. Uh, we, we rent hosting space and we buy power, and we hope it never goes out. And uh, we do everything else ourselves. So uh, maintain, uh, buy the hardware, deploy it, maintain it. Uh, part of the team is on duty 24-7 because, you know, there are no business hours for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's, uh, it's really... Uh, a, a critical platform built from from scratch and operated by us. So, so let's talk about Mongo a little bit. I mean, as, as I mentioned, Mongo is, it plays a critical role here in, in storing the data that, that allows you to serve up these ads. So, uh, walk us through a little bit how, uh, why you kind of went with Mongo, and, and what are some of the attributes specifically about Mongo that allow that is well suited to to the sure. workload you're, you're doing. So, um, initially, we were uh, using the Microsoft SQL Server, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was fine for a while, and. Uh, in, in early 2011, uh, the, the growth of the company, the number of customers, the number, the size of product feeds, the, 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 just the traffic was uh, was growing very very fast, and uh, and we had a number of technical difficulties with our SQL Server, and uh, that was the end of the road for that uh, for that technology with us, mm -hmm. and uh, so we looked at uh, alternatives, and uh, we were very very keen on using open source software. Uh, we're strong believers in uh, in open source, especially myself. <laughs> and uh, and well, we had our uh, evaluation uh, matrix, and uh, and MongoDB came came on top. And what we really like uh, about MongoDB is how easy it is. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody today, you know, repeated that, and I, I can only confirm, it's easy to use, easy to deploy. Uh, easy to manage, mm -hmm. and uh, it has uh, built-in scalability. You know, uh, high availability, which is very, very important for mm -hmm. us. Replica sets, sharding, etc. So yeah, it, it had a lot of the nice attributes that we were looking for. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you mentioned scaling. Let's talk about the scaling uh, a little bit. How uh, how does Mongo handle handle that problem? Um, and again, I'm sure you know as you're business continues to grow, yeah. uh, hopefully at this remarkable pace, scaling is going to be a major uh, a major issue. Yeah, right? it's always the number one issue as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Uh, so, uh, regarding MongoDB scalability, the, the key thing is really uh, shard, shard, shard. Uh, because that will allow you to spread uh, spread the traffic over you know multiple masters for writes, multiple slaves for reading. Uh, and and uh, it's really the number one thing for us. Mm -hmm. So we, yeah, we do have a lot, quite a few servers to do that. And, then, and now, in terms of the, talk a little bit about the analytic part of the equation, where you're you're doing, you've got to do this real time analytics. I mean, we're right. talking sub milliseconds. You've got to make a, a decision on what's the best ad to to, right. to display based on how, you know, based on who the user is and uh, right. what the, your inventory of ads are. So, so what's the what's the kind of infrastructure and data databases you so use? So the to um, no single technology. Can can do the big data, if you want to call it that way, analytics, and the millisecond scale mm -hmm. uh, processing. So basically, the heavy the, the heavy lifting is done in our Hadoop clusters. We have uh, multi petabyte clusters to uh, to crunch the data. We get about 20 terabytes of additional data every day. Uh, so we need some storage and some processing power to yeah. do that. 
the, the results of, of those jobs, uh, of those prediction and recommendation jobs done in Hadoop are then fed to uh, a caching layer. So we use memcache and, uh, and the typical technologies to do that. And those cache servers will be uh, queried in real time by the web servers. So obviously when you have to take decisions in a few milliseconds, you have no time to, to query any kind of database. Mm -hmm. So you have to access the data directly in caching. Uh, so it's a multi-tier uh, infrastructure. So Hadoop for the really, really heavy lifting and crunching, MongoDB for product information that is fed in Hadoop, and, uh, and then caches and lots and lots of uh, commodity servers and you know, scale-out architectures everywhere. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of discussions going on about sort of ad tech, um, and I want to come back to what you guys were just talking about. You know, Jeff Hammerbacher's famous quote, the best minds of my generation are spending their time trying to right. figure out how to get people to click on ads. So that's a compliment to you, because you know, you're one of the best minds of his generation. So oh, I want to know about that. Hammerbacher <laughs> is such a buzzkill. Uh, no, just kidding, we love Jeff, he's been on theCUBE. Uh, but the, one of the discussions, and you guys were just touching on it, is this notion of bringing together analytical and transaction systems into a single database. Right. And, and you uh, alluded, if I understand, Julian, that there's really no system that can do that yeah. today. Um, but there seems to be a lot of uh, attempts to do that or discussions yeah, right. about doing that. Do you see that as something that is uh, folly or is that actually near term you know, going to be a reality? Well, uh, there's a strong push to, uh, to reconcile the, the big data batch processing with slightly more uh, real time uh, uh, constraints. Uh, you know, so Hadoop, Hadoop is totally batch processing, but then you know you've got this storm uh, extension that's uh, been released, and it allows you to do stream processing on your data. That's very interesting, but this you know this is still very far away from millisecond processing. Uh, MongoDB had a MapReduce uh, framework from day one, not very good on all accounts. Now they've, uh, they've deployed their uh, uh, aggregation framework, which, which is similar, uh, and it's, it's a massive improvement. But again, at, at the scale at which we're running, it's, uh, it's just impossible to use one single data store. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, uh, everybody wants big results in very little time, so, and there's a, a lot of interest, so I'm sure you know, technology and, and startups and uh, and, and, and we'll catch up with that. But as of today, uh, we don't see any uh, silver bullet and we have to use this, this multi-tier architecture. How often are you able to, um, let's call it reprice, you know, change the, the pricing <coughs> within the system? Uh, all the time. Uh, every single uh, impression is, uh, uh, is uh, evaluated independently. S and you could, what I mean by that is if you look at two web pages in quick succession and, and uh, you have banners on, on both pages, then every single display will be evaluated independently. So uh, we, our arbitrage process uh, is really real time. Mm. Uh, and our models are refreshed multiple times per day, uh, but every single display modifies the state of, of the model, and uh, you know, if we show you 20 times the same banner and you never click, well, we have to learn from that very quickly and stop buying that space because it's, uh, you know, it's we're just losing money. Yeah, so yeah, right. uh, it, it's a combination of heavy lifting, heavy crunching, to pre-compute. I would say 99.9% .9 of the of the problem, and then the last tiny decision, tiny parts of the decision need to be made in real time because this is where we know exactly what we could show you in what context and, 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 and we want to do that in real time because that's the most relevant time. It's a very competitive space, you know, yeah. the whole ad tech. Uh, obviously Mongo, you guys are you know, doing well there. We, we just interviewed another company yesterday, Velocity Aerospike is doing some mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, uh, and, and as well, IBM Labs uh, invented this technology. I want to ask you about it, um, streaming technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then there's actually been a spin out called H Streaming. I don't know if you've heard of H Streaming, it's a company out in uh, California. And my understanding is essentially what they do is, is they 
allow you to make decisions you know, as the data is ingested, before you persist it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm wondering what you think of that approach, that technology, is it something that you, you've looked at, you have experience with it, do you think it has, has merit? Well, uh, the technology that Criteo uses is in-house technology. Uh, the, the, the code uh, for our business apps is our own code and we don't rely internally on any uh, third party solutions. So uh, people always ask me, uh, are you using some kind of BI software or, uh, or an analytics module or anything like that? And uh, no, we don't. So, so that explains how you're yeah. able to reprice so, so quickly. Yeah. And, yeah, we do use yeah. third party technology like Hadoop, MongoDB, and, and some more. But yeah, it's yeah, really yeah, a technology, yeah. Yeah. we're not yeah. about to rewrite all of that. Uh, file Thank system. God. Yeah. File systems and, uh, and <laughs> Linux and. <laughs> yeah, no need for that. Right? <laughs> no, no problem there. Uh, but but the, 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 the crypto technology is really our technology. So, uh, and I think that's a strong, um, that's, that's a strong advantage. And this is also the reason why we build our own infrastructure because we think we can tweak uh, every single part of the platform and extract value and save milliseconds, etc. So uh, uh, there, there's plenty of, of different uh, uh, products and, and solutions, but uh, we're a technology company. Uh, our, we have 170 people in R&D, and uh, if you include all the engineers in the company, it's over 300 engineers working on the product, working on, uh, uh, on, on R&D, on infrastructure, on, on uh, QA, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, pretty much 40% of the companies are engineers. So we build it, we run it, and uh, we're, we like to uh, have full control of everything. Are you building that type of technology, that, that what I described as the stream, in other words, the, abil the ability to make decisions prior to persisting that, that data, or is that something uh, that Yeah, part of, is that part, of the, part of the data we use, uh, and part of the, of the algorithms we use, are really, uh, again, strictly real time. So if you saw something a few seconds ago, uh, we'll know because we'll have that information in a cache somewhere, and we, we can use it immediately. And you know, eventually this gets persisted to logs and then you know, ends up in a dupe, et cetera. But every real-time action by, by a, a user uh, may be used very quickly uh, to, uh, to modify the profile and take more uh, intelligent decisions. So, so you've obviously got a lot of smart people working on this problem. So what, yeah. th what's the next wave of innovation in the, in the ad tech business. What are we going to see next? Is it just serving the ads up faster? Is it just making them more personalized? Or is there something else, a new, another way you can kind of innovate in this area? Sure, so of course, you know, we always strive to um, improve our existing model, try new variables, uh, and inject new data. Um, and so you can tweak that thing endlessly, and we do a lot of A/B testing to <laughs> to prove it, <laughs> or prove you know it was a, a bad idea sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's a, a, an endless stream of improvements. Uh, and the two things we're trying to improve are you know the click-through rate and the conversion rate, because mm. at the end of the day, advertisers want sales. You know they're happy to get clicks, but those clicks need to become sales. So uh, conversion rate uh, optimization is an important uh, thing for us. Um, then you know there are other products uh, we could uh, we could work on. Uh, you know, mobile comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's a, it's a very very interesting challenge. Uh, yeah, so there's plenty of different topics uh, to be explored. <laughs> we know we're not out of ideas. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Awesome, all right, Julian. Well, really appreciate the uh, the information. Stopping by the cube, you guys, great story. Doing some really leading edge stuff. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, and appreciate the collaboration with Mongo. So, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be right back with our next guest. Uh, we're winding down here. This is a full day, wall to wall coverage of the Mongo DB days. This is the cube. We'll be right back. This is Dave Vellante with Jeff Kelly. See you in a minute.